next guest. Actually, I'm a bit ashamed to say this, this lovely lady gave me her heart earlier and I threw it away. I lost it somehow, but I'm hoping she will forgive me. Um, Sarah de Jong has given her heart away many, many times. Um, Sarah, Sarah lives in Hobart with her two teenage children and their beloved rabbit. Uh, Remy, she, start, she started the Thousand Hearts Project, a kindness project, in 2016 to provide a space for people to share and celebrate kindness. And um, I'm hoping Sarah will share out her very, very huge part with us again this evening. Thank you. my story tonight I thought a lot about what I might say. Um, in fact I spent a lot of time overthinking it because that's one of my very special skills. Um, I overthought how to talk about my experience with anxiety and how to frame it up as a recovery story. I considered all aspects of anxiety because when you're overthinking you have to think of all, all aspects and all angles. When it started for me, what it looks and feels like, how it's impacted my life and what I've achieved in spite and because of it. And then I overthought all the things I might not have thought of that I might like to say. And then I realised that I don't really want to talk about anxiety very much. <laughs> I've already given way too much airtime to anxiety in my life. It's been the subject of way too much overthinking and talking and therapy. For me, recovery depends on making space for other things and focusing my energy and attention on creating a better world. Anxiety is present for me in many ways on a very regular basis. It's there in my shaking hands and my flushing skin, my churning stomach and my overactive brain. But I've realised it's not at the core of what makes me who I am. What's in my heart is a belief in the goodness of people and a steadfast faith in the power of life. Not romantic love or familial love or the love that exists between friends, although they're all included. I'm talking about a more universal kind of love. A love we can empower ourselves to create and find within ourselves and then share with other people. I believe this kind of love is a power that can change the world. I run a little kindness project called A Thousand Hearts, which is committed to sharing and celebrating kindness. It started as a little idea, one that I overthought a lot before I put it out there. <laughs> it seemed like nothing really, and I worried that people would think that I was silly. I spent a lot of time worrying about that actually. I started with 50 small felt hearts that I'd made. Hearts designed to be carried in a pocket as a reminder that someone cares. I offered the hearts to my Facebook friends in a random act of kindness. I paid for postage and sent them out to the first 50 people who requested one. The response I got from those original hearts was incredible. People messaged me to say how much it meant to receive a token of kindness with no expectation of anything in return. I realised that in our world there's a great need for kindness. I also realised that in offering kindness, I was creating connections. I was creating a community and putting the focus outside of myself. Those things were an antidote to the fear and disconnect and rumination that anxiety had brought into my life. Two years later, I've made around 8,000 of those hearts and they've gone to people all around the world. My hearts have been given out at weddings and funerals offered to the living, the dying, and the bereaved. They've been clutched in the hands of anxious children and carried in the pockets of anxious adults, me included. They've been tucked into hands, pockets, bras, handbags, undies, and wallets. Yes, undies, seriously. They've been offered out of compassion and care in countless moments of connection between two struggling humans. There's now a loving army of people around the world stitching hearts to show they care. There's a grandmother in WA who was given a heart while she was sitting by her grandson's bedside during his chemo treatment. She went on to make hearts for other paediatric patients and their families. Her small grandson, Leo, died last year, and she told me that making hearts gives her a sense of purpose and healing. There's a young woman debilitated by depression who makes hearts for other people sharing her condition. She writes to tell me how much she loves making hearts, and she sends me photos of her latest batch, and they are really beautiful. There's a little boy who was too scared to sleep in his own room after a traumatic experience. After his mum, mum's friend requested a heart in superhero colours, she sent me a photo of him 
sound asleep in his own bed, clutching a heart held up to his face. There's my sister, who's here with me tonight, who runs a sewing group in Brisbane, providing hearts to children fleeing from domestic violence. And then there's me, standing here telling you about this project and feeling like I'm not even quite sure what it's all about. For many of us, there's a huge difference between how we speak to ourselves and how we speak to other people. In my work with young people, I talk about this a lot. And a recent conversation with a 16-year-old girl got me thinking. She said, it's okay to be mean to myself, but it's not okay to be mean to other people. Somehow in our messages about kindness, we're missing a crucial component. Kindness to others is really important, but kindness to ourselves has to come first. This is my brave is all about stories. And stories are so powerful in shaping who we are and how we create our lives. When I was very young, I lost my mother to mental illness. She's still alive, but she wasn't around when I was growing up, and I relied on other people's stories to make sense of what had happened. The story I was often told was that I was born with an incredible spirit, a powerful energy that beamed out of my eyes and set me alight with passion and energy. When my mother left, so this story goes, I lost that spirit and became quiet, anxious and withdrawn. This was my story, that my mother leaving made me lose my spirit. I was the girl who lost her spark. Recently, though, I was hanging out with my dad, talking about A Thousand Hearts. I was getting excited about it, telling him some of the beautiful stories people have shared with me about how kindness has changed their world. While I was talking, my dad started to cry. He said, when you were born, you had this incredible spirit. It shone out of your eyes and it was so powerful. But you lost that when your mother left and it broke my heart to see it. But now I look at you and can see it's come back. Your spirit's come back. This is what I've learned, and if there's a take-home message from what I'm saying tonight, I'd like it to be this. It's okay to be broken. Life sometimes breaks us in ways that we can't control. In your brokenness, though, you're also whole, and all your shattered pieces make up that wholeness. Broken hearts heal, sometimes leaving messy scribbles of scar tissue behind. But I've discovered that a scarred heart is still really good at loving, and it has a deep understanding of human pain and compassion. I've discovered that if you have lost your spirit along the way, you can find it again. Since that conversation with my dad a few months ago, I've got a new story. I'm the girl who's going to change the world with kindness. I'm the girl who believes in love. I'm the girl who got her spark back. Thank you.